it's been a while since my last video where I actually spoke so unfortunately for you you're gonna hear some Brit uh, rambling on about the positives and negatives of my tank I had a bit of a holiday in America loved it um, come back and uh, my tank had, has really kind of subsided a little bit in quality um, I wasn't dosing no pox like I was prior to the holiday and um, even though I had a tank sitter which was my dad and I've got the apex and um, the KH did diminish a bit and the calcium magnesium kind of got out of sync so there's a, there's a few losses um, I've got it back on track now I'll show you my experiences with no pox since I started dosing it again show you what corals I've added and uh, just show off um, kind of how good it looks and what could be better cheers okay so here's a tank from a front angle I just popped a bit of an algae pellet in there because the tank was hungry um, so they'll be feeding away I have added a Kessel A 350 to the system um, before it was the A150 and there wasn't an, a, enough light really so I waited around till I had more money and, and I bought a, a, a second hand A350N which is a narrow one and it goes lovely with a 350W a lot more light spread I've only had that on there a couple of weeks probably about a week and a half actually but already I'm seeing that the corals uh, polyp expansion is a lot better and um, that just there's no there's no kind of um, high shaded areas and, and there just wasn't enough light before so I'm glad I done that and it was a good price I only paid £150 for it um, which is probably around I don't know $145 or something um, and I've added a few more corals like I said before there were some losses my bird's nest coral was the biggest kind of one because it started to strip once the KH was out of sync and the KH dropped it didn't help that I was using a test kit that had aged and once I used the calibration liquid I noticed that the test kit was telling me that it was about 1 dKH higher than it actually was so I had to slowly raise my KH up it's around 8 now um, which is a nice kind of level I think because if you keep it around 7 like some people do then it's, it's going to drop down um, to a danger area um, everyone has their KH at, at different levels they say you know 7 to 11 um, they say that higher KH equals more growth etc but also depends what you want to achieve but I'll keep mine at 8 now and, and things are going well with it calcium's 460 uh, magnesium's around 3, 1380 and um, I've, I've been dosing no pox again I stopped dosing before I went to America um, so that was at the end of April um, I was, it wasn't until the end of May that I started to dose again um, you're not really supposed to stop it suddenly some people say they have uh, ill effects from it some people say that it doesn't really affect anything but I definitely had negative effects from stopping abruptly um, I had a lot of recession of corals um, that as well as the, the KH depletion lack of water changes it was a when there's more than one change going on it's difficult to pinpoint the actual cause but overall I think it was just neglect but I'm going to show you now a closer look at kind of what's doing really good now and what's been added. So on the LPS side of things, um, this meat coral, donut coral, which it actually expands to probably half that size again. I've not long been messing with the tank, um, so it's a bit closed up, but that's doing really well. It feeds well. Um, it takes food into its mouth readily despite what time of day it is um, it's looking really nice this chalice is always doing well um, on the right of the shot it's really starting to play at the bottom of the tank um, I am bare bottom I've had no sand for a while now I do miss sand slightly because of the, the way it looks but I've noticed a huge difference in the amount of flow I can um, push around the system and also nutrients are easier to control in my opinion and I've had tanks with sand before and after a few years had problems with a sand bed but everyone does it differently so this is the bird's nest that's been stripping which I blame on I suppose the lack of um, 
amino acids and lack of trace elements and that in the water when I was using Nopox and also depletion in KH, just lack of husbandry I think. Um, it's starting to bounce back a lot now, it was a lot worse than that but you can see underneath there's areas of of white, um, probably where there's lack of light in them parts but you'll see stripping, kind of I'll zoom in there, kind of that in the, in the middle of the shot, you'll see stripping of where the polyps have disappeared a lot. I've got one over the other side of the tank on the right hand side that's doing a lot better, I'll show you it. This business coral is um, off the same colony, it was fragged off the same colony, it's doing a lot better, it's, it still was affected by the neglect but this seems to have bounced back a lot better. I don't know if that's because it's just in a slightly different position or maybe it's it's in an area where it prefers to flow or maybe the um, the lumens of the light, uh, sorry I mean the um, Kelvin of the light where it's over this side and the par readings but overall this side's looking a lot better. This uh, frog spawn in the centre of the shot had some flatworm on it and uh, I used a syringe and managed to uh, suck a lot of the flatworm off and um, it started to open up again and is in uh, quite a good uh, quality now. It's around other um, euphilia as well which are doing well. Sorry about the camera work. But it's, it's waving in the uh, flow quite nicely. I'll come across this way. I love chalice. I've got um, these couple of chalice here. It's like a, I call it like a blue chocolate chip kind of chalice on the left hand side there. It's really starting to grow. Um, and the chalice on the right. Some mushrooms that hitchhike their way from my old tank have settled nicely. These three SPS um, I've placed in today. So they're acclimating to the conditions. Over here. The Blastos, um, Blastomosa, Wowsy on the left hand side, they're doing really well. They've, they grew from a couple of heads to that. Favour in the middle is doing good. Now that coral that you see the crab on, the Lobo, that's from a, that's from a tank I had about five years ago. Um, well, I started it around, no, no, four years ago. And that was really hit during the neglect. Um, Lobos don't te seem to like... Um, my tank anyway but I think during the neglect it started to uh, recede and it's slowly but surely coming back but it's going to take time like we say nothing happens fast that's good in this hobby this guy's always done well um, it, it, it eats a lot of food um, it's, a, it's a great little trekkie if I can zoom in on this you'll see it's very healthy it's always done well in there, it's been in there a long time now, but that wasn't affected. I've added an urchin. Um, my coralline was getting out of hand at one point. Um, I was sick of getting it off the glass and it, it eats the coralline nicely, this urchin. That spiky's doing well, he's no trouble. They can knock over rocks and that, but um, my rocks are nicely puttied on. Now down here... Um, This flower pot coral, um, branching goni, I've never really, when it first went in when the nitrates were higher, it really liked my tank. But now um, it's becoming quite fussy, I'm, I'm moving it around like a chess piece at the minute. And uh, I think because I've used the nopox and my nitrates, um, it's lower than 10 now, I think it's around 6 parts per million. Even though that's quite nutrient, nutrient rich still. I mean, you can get your, get your nitrate closer to zero and uh, then you might start seeing changes. But this guy just seems really fussy. When I move into a new position, he takes some time to settle back down. But we'll see how we get on with him. A couple of little um, frags over here that are doing well. It's like a, a war coral over here. A plate in one, which is doing nicely. And another favia frag here. Now this guy actually stung uh, a coral that was quite close to it. But it weren't that close that I thought we were going to have a problem. But I'll show you the coral it stung. Now sorry if the quality is poor but I've had to zoom in. I'm using my Samsung camera phone. You'll see that that coral there on the right hand side of the shot. 
the error it was stung um, has completely disintegrated over time but the other half it's almost exactly in half um, has really bounced back and doing well it's his feeder tentacles come out and um, it's, it's starting to eat more and has recovered it just shows you that these corals can recover if they're kept under good conditions after something like that so the no pox on now because it's lower than 10 parts per million nitrate I'm dosing around 8 mil in my tank and need to keep on top of testing the nitrate um, they say don't miss a dose and I haven't yet I've, I've been dosing now in total probably around six months but I had a two month break in the middle but initially after restarting the no pox I think my nitrate was around 60 parts per million um, so now I say it's around to about six parts per million so it's doing well phosphates around 0 0.03 but most things seem very happy those uh, acan corals there, the, the orange ones in the middle of a the shot, they normally puff up a lot bigger, but they actually started off as just two heads. Now they're around nine. These Blasto, Blaster, Mosa, uh, Metallis, they, they're doing really well. They've kind of um, gone from around two heads to around, I think it's about 16, 17, but I have had that a long time. Overall, the growth in the tank hasn't been fantastic considering it's been set up two years. And I blame that on basically not high enough calcium. An error in um, a test kit that was telling me my KH was a lot more stable and a lot higher than it was. And just lack of water changes really. But, you know, overall it's looking good. But I'm determined to get a lot more growth out of it. That Favia coral there in the, in the middle of the shot now, the, the green one, that's quite an old coral. Um, it's got its colours back now, that, that colour faded a lot. There's that coral that stung the... It's like a maize coral or part of a, a frag of a brain coral. But it's got a very bright blue in the middle of it. I don't know if you can pick it up on the camera, but it's really nice. Over here... Um, as Montipora, there's that bird's nest. But yeah, I'm, I'm still really, really happy that the apex is, is controlling the system well. The tang's getting on really well and eating everything I put in. It's getting on with the clown. I love the shimmer. I think I'll always have Kessels due to that. If I show you the other side of the tank as well, that's it from a distance. From around here, you can really see the shimmer on that. So that's the right hand view of the tank. It's a deep tank, 30 inches. My Bubble Mega Skimmer C6 has done a fantastic job of helping to. Um, get rid of the no pox when it's dragging out the um, bacteria to lower nitrate and phosphate I think a decent skimmer is a massive part of this I wouldn't run a tank without a decent skimmer I'll show you my sump underneath up here is my apex that's the um, apex control of a display. I added a new heater. Um, I noticed that my heater was kind of fluctuating a lot and it wasn't really meeting um, this, the requirements that I wanted, which is up to 25.5 degrees. Um, and I wouldn't have known that if I hadn't have had my heater probe um, on the go. So I bought a new heater. There's 400 watts of heat in this tank, but one of the heaters I replaced. It's always best to get good quality heaters. It's really important. The automatic feeder is brilliant. Um, it's a bit noisy, but it's great to, to use on when you're away or just in the daytime if I'm on shift to um, do a feeding of the dry food that's in there. In that cupboard down there is where my electrics are. Not the best of use because the couch is in the way, but down there is where I keep all my um, electrics for the setup. And there's my sump, simplistic but clean. I've got the Aquamedic top off system on the right. 
um, Bubble Mega C6, which I keep clean. I cleaned my return pump not so long ago, the other week, and I was shocked to see just how much um, detritus and calcification around the propeller and that that had built up. It's really important to clean your return pump. I YouTubed a video on how to clean the Jabeo DC3000 and it was a great YouTube video. Um, you'll find a few of them online. And that's, that's back on now. I service my Kessel lights as well. I take off the screws at the top and clean out the fans. I've got the official Kessel gooseneck on that side. This one I use like a, it's from a, an artist lamp um, kind of gooseneck thing. I've, I've, that's just temporary but it's solid. I don't know if I'll save myself £40 and just leave it as it is really. Um, but it's solid and they're, they're both up there doing a really good job. The fish are doing well. I've added um, some humble damsels, some yellowtail damsels. It's quite a semi-aggressive reef tank. But they all get on well. Initially I had problems with the tang um, and the clownfish. Um, the clownfish is just so boisterous. I've, I've had her in there two, two years now. Um, she used to attacking anything that went in. She attacked a, a, a blue throat trigger until it finally jumped out of the tank. Um, but these two guys, they, they go on pretty well. Now and again, they'll the tang will tell her to go away. Um, but overall, there's not not really an issue. They're all very active and very happy. Um, but yeah, you know, feel free feel free to comment. Um, if you subscribe, I always subscribe back. And uh, any comments, much appreciated. But that's uh, Bridges Box of Water. That's my obsession. Probably what's going to get me divorced from my wife one day if I continue. But you know what, this hobby is addictive and I don't spend my money on much else. So I'm just keeping my eye on the perimeters at the moment. Um, I just want to get some growth and I'll update when, when these little... These little babies have grown out down here, these little SPS, um, and when they're fixed in position, I use like a milliput for that in the UK. It's um, like a plumbing um, kind of milliput that a lot of retailers use in their tanks, which have no ill effects. I've used loads of different kind of putties. Main thing that lacks with putty is the lack of a sticky property, I think. TMC do a fantastic one. D&D, &D, not all that, I don't think. There's no sticky property to it whatsoever. You more like have to clamp your corals and that down with it. There we go. Thanks for watching.